And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Welcome in to RBLR Bucks here on RBLR Sports. It is two weeks away from the NFL Draft, and with that in mind, we're going to take a look at kind of what some of the pundits around the interwebs have been saying, all the talking heads on television shows have been guessing and postulating everyone in the world has a mock draft, and we are going to take a look at some of the players that they have positioned the Tampa Bay Bucks to select. My name is Eureka, and joining us this week as we dive into the spreadsheets and tabulations and fantasy booking of all of the things NFL are Mikey. What's up, man? What's going on, fellas? I'm excited to see who potentially can join the championship Buccaneer team. And, of course, we have Musab. What's up, man? What's going on, listeners? What's going on, Eureka and Mikey? I'm doing well. I'm fantastic. Uh, and I'm super excited to talk about my Bucks. And today, I actually finally, hey. finally hey. received my Devin White Super Bowl edition jersey. So, hey. oh, air horn sound I effect. Am, <laughs> yeah, I am, I'm super excited. So, yeah, uh, I'm man. ready. And yeah. Well, I, 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 that is awesome, man. And I can't wait to see, like, like, who the next big like up and coming young gun is going to be. And that's, that's the, this is the time in the year where all these guys have potential and you start hearing things about, Oh, this guy's upside. Oh, but, but maybe this guy has asthma. So he's going to drop down eight, eight, eight rounds. And, and, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but with all of the ups and downs, eventually all of the, all of the BS has to settle. And these guys are going to actually get picked by teams. Uh, before we get into some of that, though, there's only a couple headlines that, that I found around. Uh, the, the, the big one being that as we record here on Wednesday, uh, Antonio Brown has come to a settlement. Um, uh, so I'm hoping his legal troubles are behind him. So the first question would be, uh, Musab, do, do you think that these kind of legal off the field troubles were the big roadblock uh, uh, between him and the Bucks uh, coming to an agreement? Or, or is it something else? Um, I think it, I think it's something else. Uh, I don't, I don't think this has too much effect on, um, kind of like the football game for him. Um, but one way or another, this does affect kind of his kind of status overall. Um, so that's, that's really about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mikey, uh, again, is this, is Antonio Brown, is, is this been what, what kind of Jason Light's been kind of uh, keeping his hands like standoffish away from from getting the, the pen to paper on this deal? I think it could be a piece of the puzzle, but I don't think it's the determining factor of why he hasn't signed with the Bucks or why we haven't come to an agreement yet. He had these issues last year, and we brought him on board. Uh, we chased the Super Bowl with him, and we got it. I think it's just overall aura that that uh that ab brings and you know just weighing out the options man we're, we're deep at that position so it may have some effect but i don't think that you know now that he's cleared or has come to a settlement i, I don't think we'll see news that he signed tonight or tomorrow um i, I think it's more in depth than that yeah and and i think there's even a, a more likely possibility that he won't sign uh he won't resign with with the bucks but it, it's kind of been the one last little piece and i say i know I, we've all kind of expressed our concern that like we would we'd love to have a b on the team but if we didn't have him uh you know maybe there's other guys that are waiting in the wings so so we'll we'll see how that works out but but two things that are brand new for the buccaneers family and that is uh, Ryan Suckup and Shaq Barrett have welcomed newborn babies into the world. Hey. That is awesome. Uh, yeah. We got a we got a couple dads here at RBLR, man. So it's always Let's good to go. see. It's always good to see, man. Ryan Fire Suckup. Fire the cannons for the dads. Yeah, boy. You know, uh, uh, Father's Day is gonna get a little hyper uh, in the in the locker room. So uh, Ryan Suckup has a newborn son, and Shaq Barrett welcomes a little daughter. So uh, it, yeah, go ahead, man. What's up, man? <laughs> Team girls. That team team girls over uh, here. 
Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Shaq Barrett's uh, daughter is probably gonna be pretty intimidating too on the on the on the playground. <laughs> if, oh yeah. If she gets one a millionth of the of the intensity of of uh, you know Sack Barrett there, uh, and maybe Ryan, maybe we got a little baby kicker uh, in, in uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll end up drafting him in the seventh round and just putting him on a developmental no. contract. No, no more, no, no more, no more uh, kicker drafts, please. We've learned our lesson with that. <laughs> Well, uh, well, with the, all, all jokes aside, uh, I, I would ask, uh, Mikey, what do you, what do you, how would you put together the team needs uh, for this? We've had a couple weeks to kind of think about it, talk about it with re-signings, free agency, all that kind of stuff. Where do you see the top needs of the Bucks? So the great thing about this draft and the needs that we need this year is nothing is we don't need a, a starting position, right? We need we need depth. Mm. Um, so we're at a, in a position that we can take the best player on the field, which is a great position to be in, or best player in the draft um, at, at whatever round or position we're in at the moment. Um, the needs that I think we need is depth on the defensive line. Okay. Vita Vea goes out for some reason. JPP goes out for some reason. Shaq Bear goes out for some reason. We need – a fresh pair of legs, a young up-and-coming star um, to fill in and pick up where they would leave off. Um, so my f- number one priority would be defensive line, whether that's edge or an interior defense alignment. Okay. So defensive line would be my priority number one. Priority number two for me would be cornerback or DBs in general. Again, young, talented group, Carlton Davis, Sean Murphy Bunting, Dean, all these guys balled out last year um, and showed improvement, right? Second year guys um, had a wave of of productivity and and efficient playing and then had some slumps where they didn't play as well, but played very well when it counted the most. But if for some reason one of these guys were to go down, again, we need a young stud in there um, that can grow with these guys. And in a few years, when, when they're ready to go off and get those big contracts, if we were to lose one of them, um, it's not going to hurt us too bad. So need number two for me is DB, cornerback. Okay. And uh, three, um, I would say maybe offensive line. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're good in weapons. We got the receivers. We got the tight ends. We're loaded up at running back right now. Um, so for me, I think my third uh, position of need that I, that I think we should target early on would be offensive line. All right, uh, Musab, how do you have it stacked up for the needs of the Buccaneers? Uh, piggybacking off of what Mikey was saying, um, you know, we are definitely drafting for depth. You know, obviously we got, we got all of our starters back and they're looking good, being that we are the Super Bowl champs. Uh, so my first, you know, need for me, I'm going to have to say is definitely defense. But um, I want to say a, a little bit of um, – I think I think for me the first one would definitely be like D line, um, as well. But I also do want to prioritize uh, our DBs and corner, uh, you know, our DB unit, okay. um, like our cornerbacks and safeties, uh, just because I definitely do think that first of all we need some depth in there as well, um, and also just we we need some we need some speed on defense. Uh, we need some guys who are young, quick, and ready to you know take on these kind of veteran wide receivers who pose as threats against us um so that's that's gonna be my first one now for my second one uh i'm gonna have to say i'm gonna put offensive line up there um okay. just because if anything whether it be o-line d-line i really want to emphasize on the depth if we're not going to be going for you know like a safety or cornerback then i do definitely think we need to be going for an ol or dl uh for sure um just because you know things happen whether it be in the beginning of the season or in the end of the season. And, you know, we need we need solid, reliable backups. Uh, that's the only way we're going to be a championship team. You know, we had, we had our backups. They stepped up this year. Uh, they got the job done. And for that reason, you know, we, you know, they helped us to the Super Bowl. Uh, and then for my third one, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say a little mix of just, just we need, we need someone who can be an offensive weapon. Uh, whether that be running back or wide receiver. Um, now, I would throw in maybe like getting getting a nice young quarterback in there as well. Uh, but ideally, I do want to prioritize the wide receivers and running backs as well. I just think that, you know, the more weapons we have for Tom Brady, the better. 
uh, especially if they're kind of if we have a variety of weapons. Uh, but if if you know the Bucks management decides differently, then I'm hoping that their third their third need is then getting a young quarterback because uh, hmm. you know it's. Hmm. It's obviously, uh, you know, it's not like Tom Brady's, you know, halfway through his career or whether he's, a, you know, he's like starting it right now. It's the road's, you know, he's towards the finish line. The road's coming to an end and we need a guy, you know, we need a guy for our for our team who can, you know, step up when we need him and show out. So that's going to be my third one. Awesome, guys. And, and it was it was good to see kind of. You know what what you were thinking and how that meshes meshes sorry meshes with what kind of the all the talking heads and pundits uh, that all the guys that work between uh, uh, CBS Sports NFL Network Pro Football Focus USA Today Yahoo Sports you name it uh, I we I've pretty much scoured the globe and I've kind of put together the the uh, a list of names of guys that the Bucks have been. Uh, kind of uh, attached to, or at least when they're doing their mock drafts, they're they're kind of they're thinking how it how it ro- how it comes out. So uh, everything from po- Pro Football Focus having a fan mock draft where they they kind of had uh, the thousands of people that that are subscribed to that website uh, give their own opinions and they kind of mix that into a a fan draft. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of these that are out there. So uh, if you ever want to just go down a rabbit hole, if you just type in 2021 NFL mock draft and just see the millions of results that come after that. So, uh, but we're trying to make it pretty easy for, for you guys here. So um, I would say the uh, just thinking about the first round, that's pick number 32 as we are the Super Bowl champions and we have the very last pick in the first round uh, of uh, until there's compensatory picks. But uh, at number 32, the number one name that people have going to the Buccaneers, and that is Christian Barmore. Uh, Christian Barmore kind of projects as a, uh, a very ready to go, uh, defensive tackle. He's got raw power. He's got busy, powerful hands and, and, you know, just a rock solid body. I mean, he's, he's definitely, he's got the maturity level. Um, he's there. The, the one knock is that he didn't start all the time at Alabama and he, he's definitely got a lot to, uh, kind of grow into in terms of uh, leveraging double teams, um, and he's he's he hasn't really picked up anything other than a swim move. Now that swim move is excellent. The swim move is his number one tool, but uh, kind of trying to develop uh, an extra. Uh, power or a finesse move other than just his power and raw athleticism so uh musaba i'll go to you first man uh christian barmore uh he's he's kind of uh, ranked as the number two defensive tackle in this draft depending on who you go with um uh what have you seen out of barmore i've seen a lot out of him i mean there's a reason why he his name is recognized in the 2021 nfl draft Uh, i mean he is I mean, the dude comes from Alabama, so you know he's he's ready to play. Um, for me, what I really liked about him when I was watching his tape was he's he's pretty flashy for uh you know for a lineman. Um, and I do think that you know he he really has some explosive moments as well that you know that have helped his team, but also just agile. He keeps his feet moving. Um, and redirecting kind of his body towards you know blocking or actually just getting to the quarterback as well. Um, but overall, you know, I just, for me, uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping everything works well. Uh, you know, the only thing that, you know, has been a worry for a lot of people is kind of just his overall playing strength, uh, being that he is a lineman, uh, his, his stamina sometimes comes into, uh, into the, uh, into the equation, but uh, you know, there's been times where he's he struggled against you know larger like kind of you know mauling blockers, um, but he's also succeeded against those as well. So it's you know the way I kind of see it right now, it's it's a little fifty fifty. Uh, he performed really well in college, uh, but uh, you know with, with all these linemen, you know the thing the thing that always comes to my head is you're playing with a whole different group of of guys. Well, let me tell you something. You were probably playing with boys before. Because half those guys are just 18, 19. You know what I'm saying? So for that reason, um, I'm going to have to see. 
I mean, the, the thing I, well, I'll just summarize it. The thing I love is his athleticism. He's agile, but the only thing that worries me is how is he going to be, you know, how is his overall strength? How is he going to be going against larger opponents, especially if he doesn't get that kind of first step on them? So it's a little, uh, I'm going to say like a kind of a 50 50 for me. I mean, I think you'd be great, um, but uh, there are some elements for me to consider with Barmore, especially drafting him at uh, 32, 32nd pick. Yeah, Mikey. Uh, you know, uh, Barmore wasn't uh, he wasn't a full time starter at Alabama, but he he still showed pretty good flashes. Um, p- part of the reason he wasn't a starter is he did have a, a knee injury. But uh, uh, coming back from that, do do you think now we're at thirty two? This is number one yeah. draft pick. I mean, this is the same round where you're picking up Mike Evans, Vita Vea, Devin White, Tristan Wirfs. Yeah. Um, is a knee injury to a lineman a, a big red flag to you, or do you think uh, that's not so much in this case and Barmore can can come back from that? No, I don't think knee injuries uh, are a big red flag these days, the way, uh, you know, technology has advanced. You know, Dean had, uh, you know, Jamal Dean had two knee injuries um, before going into, what, college um, and he's played well. I mean, guys recover from knee injuries pretty quickly. Okay. But I, I do have big concerns picking someone in the first round who is not a full-time starter. Mm, okay. um, you know, first-round guys got to be full-time starters. Um, they they got to have had that body of work um, in college to be able to, to, to succeed at the NFL level. I'm mean, looking at his tape, man. He's a big body, strong. You can tell he's a strong guy. Um, gets downfield pretty quickly um, and with some aggression. Um, but, you know, I don't know if he would be my number one pick or if I would be too hot on him, especially with having uh, Sue coming back, Vita Vea coming back. I mean, those are big body, physical guys in the middle. And I don't see him um, feeling any type of need or you know, depth per se, especially with, with signing, um, you know, the guys that we've re-signed as our backups on the field as well. Um, I, I don't know if he'd be uh, on my radar per se. All right. Uh, the, 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 the next most uh, popular pick at 32 for, for the Bucks is a, is also a defensive lineman and that is Levi Onzerike. And he is uh, kind of ranked as the fifth best uh, defensive lineman, but at 32, uh, that's still a pretty good uh, pick up there. Uh, just kind of my little notes on on uh, Onzerike. Uh, excellent athleticism, uh, good quickness, uh, pass rusher all the way, man. He has, um, he 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 runs. He's he he's got a motor, and he's really difficult for a one on one matchup. Uh, you're looking at um, uh, you're looking at a guy. 6'3", 290, uh, coming out of Washington, and, oh, and yeah. he's, he's a big boy, and he moves really, really well. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Musab, man, I'll ask you about uh, Onsarike here. Uh, CBS Sports and Sporting News both have him as the guy that the Bucks are going to pick. What uh, what do you think about that? Um, I think he should be a little more up just because uh, I really like his profile. Um, although he, he opted out of the 2020 season, I think he has a very – attractive 2021 kind of NFL draft profile uh, for me. Um, and, I, I mean, you said it yourself, Eureka. The guy is, he's super athletic. He's explosive. I mean, he is, he's an issue for, you know, the opposing team. Um, he's always, you know, working his hands throughout the action, constantly rushing opponents up the field. And even, you know, he's even got some blocked punts in the past as well. There you go. So, yeah, what I like about him as well – Overall, is this, he plays intense and he chases the action. Um, I think, I think, well, he was a game changer at Washington, and I'm, I'm hoping you know once he gets kind of more experience, I think he'll be a game changer as well for uh, for our Bucks if we do draft him, because um, he can do a little bit of everything. Um, it just you know it just comes down to all right. Well, again, uh, first you know you, you opted out of the 2020 season, and second of all, uh, how's How's your playing balance? Because that's that's the only kind of uh, question for me. Uh, I didn't really see too much of that, you know, throughout his tape. Uh, it was kind of just just being a very dominant figure. Um, but hey, you know, we have so many weapons, as Mikey said. Uh, you know, it's not a huge worry that you know maybe he's got a weakness here or there. Um, and that's also something that you know, can, you know, 
the team can work on with him as well. Sure. So uh, I would I would love the guy. I I think he's great. Um, I think he fits to me. He fits the need. Um, but for me, I'm wondering mm-hmm. is you know if we're gonna draft this guy, um, then how much how much time will he really get to play and how will he really perform uh, just against a whole different kind of bunch of guys yeah mikey uh how are we looking on on um on on this prospect yeah man so what i would say looking at this guy's tape is he fits the number one run defense that we have like to maintain a number one run defense that the buccaneers have this guy fits in perfectly man like mm. musab said he uses his arms extremely well um, extends them, keeps the offensive line at a distance, able to track the running back and see which direction the running back is going. Um, you put on that tape, you know, the first 10 highlights are him, you know, putting his face into a running back, um, getting in the backfield, shedding blocks with his hands. Um, so I love the way he uses his hands, his arms. I love the way he sheds the blocks, the way he chases down the run. Uh, I think he'd be a, a great prospect, a depth, you know, piece for that number one, run stopping defense that the Buccaneers have so if if we're looking to maintain that and and that's a priority for us which I know it is a priority to have that number one run stopping defense um I I think he'd fit in that role perfectly the the next guy uh that I'll bring up is is an edge rusher for sure I mean this guy is that's that's exactly what he does uh uh Onzerike could be an inside or outside Barmore is Probably going to be a, th- a three technique uh, defensive tackle, but a guy like Jason Owe, here's a guy very long, very athletic, very explosive, um, and, and he's pretty much um, uh, going to be like a kind of a Von Miller type, where you're just sending him on the pass rush and and maybe he can uh, defend some passes, everyone. But um, uh, Mikey, I guess I'll start with you, man. Uh, uh, Jason Owe, is this a guy that we think can play as an outside linebacker or 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 an uh, or an edge rusher in the Buccaneers defense? Yeah, man, I I think he would be able to fit in. You know, and in, in this league, it all goes you know back to coaching. If they have the talent, um, if they've showed that they've been able to do it um, at the college level, uh, you know, we have the number one coaching staff in the league, man. We we got we got a. Uh, we got Todd Bowles and, and that defense rolling. So I, I think he has the talent to fit in um, in either one of those roles, to be honest. Uh, Musa, man, how scary would it be if you had Devin White on one side and a guy that has a potential, like Owe does, of being a 10-plus sack guy a year? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of making a, a scary defense even scarier. I would be very worried, Eureka, and I'm going to tell you why, because first of all, I mean, Devin White, Mr. Future Defensive Player of the Year, in my opinion. And then you got this guy, Jason Oway, who I see as explosive. Um, and, you know, for, for the size he has, I think he has great strength. Uh, he, pl- he plays off those blocks. Very, dis- you know, very smooth and fluid. Kind of those guys who just, who can read the field. And they just, you know, they just know what they need to do. You know, when I was watching this tape, I could just tell that, you know, he knew exactly what he needed to do. Um, Obviously, was he perfect? No, but uh, all those times I was watching him, he was on his feet, ready to just do something. Whether that means you know watching uh, where the you know <clears throat> where the wide receivers are going, running backs going, or whether he needs to be sacking the quarterback. Um, so, but the only thing uh, I may have a negative on, but the thing is, it can easily be fixed. Is kind of just that uh, he kind of lacks that bulkiness to kind of get away by a single blocker. Um, yeah. And it's also, you know, with that happening, it's kind of also uh, w- what's also been an issue is sometimes locating the ball has been an issue for him uh, when he when that does happen. You know, it's, you have that single blocker issue, um, then, you know, losing kind of sight of where the ball is going now. Uh, so then what happens is he yeah. kind of just stands over that tackle and isn't really as effective uh, as he has been. Uh, in other times, but I'm gonna have to say overall for him, he's uh, we, we could use him. I mean, the, the dude's explosive. Uh, he's made a lot of plays behind the the line of scrimmage. Um, I think I think he'll easily be able to just kind of size up and take on some big guys. I don't think that's an issue, but uh, he has a really huge upside, and I really do think that uh, he may 
may have a little slow start in his rookie year, but once he kind of gets a little more experience, more playing time, or just more time in the NFL, uh, I think he's going to do, be doing a lot of damage on the field. Awesome, man. The the last guy I'll bring up and then kind of open it up for, for, for you guys, uh, any of the other kind of uh, players you've seen, uh, people taking the first round. But the last guy I'll bring up is uh, Gregory Rousseau. And that's a, uh, he, he's kind of one of these guys that in a dream scenario, if he's falling down because he is rated uh, as the number one edge rusher. Uh, by by some uh, st- uh, measurement, but uh, th- here's another guy. He opted out of 2020, um, but uh, what what they have seen with his raw talent in, when he was there is that he's a guy who's going to produce a uh, big physical skill set. Uh, he he's he's very long. He's got a big frame, and he has the ability, or at least the upside to become a guy that can play multiple positions up front in the in that front seven. So uh, it's another guy, like Musab was saying, may, may be a little underdeveloped, but uh, but he his upside is up through the roof. So here's a guy that maybe a team takes him in the first 15 picks, but it's another guy that could fall down. And, and at 32, you know, uh, I don't think Mr. Wright is there at 32. There's always going to be a, a a con here and there uh, versus all the pros. But, uh, but uh, Mikey, what do you kind of see out of Gregory Rousseau uh, and, and him coming off the edge? This guy's explosive. Uh, you throw on the tape and he's in the backfield with his hand in the quarterback's face, uh, making sacks, making plays, causing fumbles, uh, has a big body, long, uh, quick first step. Uh, I see a lot of potential in this guy, and uh, like you said, you know, he he might not be a starter off the gate coming coming in at 32, um, but someone that that can sit back and learn from JPP, learn from Shaq Barrett. Um, I mean, this guy's explosive, man. He he has a, a spark to him when he's out on that field. I um, mean, he he shows up on the tape when he throws the tape on. Um, you know, you see number 15 making plays all over the field. So um, this is a this is a, a prospect that that uh, that gets me pretty worked up. Um, I uh, I'm I'm a fan of of his playing style um, and the energy that he brings to the to the plays. So um, I, I like I like this guy a lot. Uh, yeah, Musa, man, I, I guess uh, I'll, I'll ask it. Is are there are there one or two players that you you see that some of these other pundits are, are taking at 32 for the Bucks? Uh, yeah, one guy uh, I was rather very interested in was Mr. Aziz Ojulari okay. uh, from Georgia. Uh, for me, when I was looking at his tape, uh, I was kind of what I saw was just this kind of bendy, versatile player who who's got this explosive first step. He can also drop in coverage too. So what I really what I what I really like about him, what makes him special, especially at the, uh, the thirty second pick, was you know we're we're not really just getting kind of a typical kind of pass rusher out of him. You know we're gonna be getting all three downs. You know and that's that's the kind of player I think that we can use, especially looking at it in depth. We need a guy who can play all three downs for sure. We need a guy who, who has, who's been improving throughout you know, each year in college. He was improving big time this past season. He was ranked third uh, in sacks, uh, also adding 12 tackles for loss. Um, so, I mean, he's just been a really dominant figure. And um, personally, I just have this kind of small, small bias towards SEC players just because it's my, <laughs> it's my favorite kind of conference. I just yeah. think that they're a whole different breed. SEC football to me is a whole different breed. Yeah. That's why, um, that's why I just, I just think this guy is special. I just think that, you know, whether even the weaknesses that he may have, he may have, those are things that can easily be kind of tweaked up on and fixed. Uh, so that's, you know, if not Greg Rousseau, then I'm going to say someone like him, someone that, you know, we can kind of get a little bit of everything someone who has got the stamina to just keep fighting. All right, uh, Mikey, uh, is there another name uh, that you've seen out there that, that the pundits are kind of taking in the first round for the Bucks that we haven't talked about? Um, I mean, th- there's always getting names thrown around. There was one in particular I saw also out of uh, my, also out of Miami. Uh, I believe it was Jalen Phillips, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. On um, the analyst. He also, he also stood out. Um, on the film when I watched him, very, very explosive, um, came off the edge. And he's another one out of Miami. 
Um, but you know, there's so many names, man. Come, you know, yeah. it's the draft. It's mock draft season, so um, there, there's going to be a bunch of people tied to the Bucks and every other team. Um, well, I was going to ask you too. Uh, you, you were you were talking about cornerbacks and safeties. What about a guy like Asante Samuel Jr. out of Florida State? Asante Samuel Jr. I got to look him up, man. Yeah, he's a guy. Uh, he's so a little undersized. Okay, five ten, one hundred eighty five. But but you know he's he's the he's one of the the he's not a top ranked, but he's in the top five in, in most lists. Uh, he's got a four point four four forty. Uh, I mean the guy's. Uh, Pretty pretty good. I mean, he's a uh, uh, he he's been kind of in the mix all ACC conference at at his position. He's kind of uh, he, he is people think What's he's gonna, Asante Sammy Junior. Samuel. Yeah, yeah, the son of Asante Samuel. He went to Florida State, and, and uh, he's a guy that you know he can play inside in the slot, and I think that's probably where he would come in as a rookie. Um, but maybe he can develop uh, as an outside island defender. It's just him being undersized at five ten. That's kind of a that's kind of a push. But uh, um, he, he's pretty quick. He he makes uh, he makes pretty good uh, uh, adjustments at the line. He can see the the field really well. Um, he covers well in zone. And I know you know obviously that that cover two that we play a lot over mm-hmm. the top. Um, basically he he's a guy that could be a slot corner in my eye but also transition into maybe a maybe a, a free safety in the future he's a, he's a smaller size corner looks like huh yeah 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 for sure yeah yeah i mean well cuz if you're looking at other guys like patrick sertan uh junior uh 62 200 pounds out of alabama caleb ferry out of virginia tech 61 207 um but those guys aren't as quick as Asante Samuel, who has about uh, you know a, a little bit of time, almost a tenth of a second over the top of those guys. Which, which at corner speed is absolutely something that I look at. Uh, oh, sometimes yeah. you know, for if, if we're shedding uh, uh, tenths of seconds between tight ends, it's like uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of bigger corner. Like I'm a big fan of Carlton Davis size, Jamal Dean sizes. When I when I see little corners, it reminds me of Ver, Vernon Hargraves, and and uh, and I get nightmares of that. What was the cornerback we had before him? Um, smaller dude. He actually played pretty well. Grimes. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Brent yeah. Grimes. Brent, yeah. I mean, he he was good. He he had he had his his seasons where he, he was very productive for us. But I'm I'm just a big corner type of guy for me. So even though Asante Samuels Jr. has a really good name and seems like he has really good talent, um, you know, unless he unless he was made for that slot position, I would try to get someone maybe a little bit, you know, a little someone with a little bit more size. All right, and uh, you know uh, the last thing we'll bring up before we get out of here is we, we've talked about kind of the first round at thirty two, but the second round. I mean, the second round is a, is a round where we've gotten uh, Levante David. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, Ali Marpet, Donovan Smith, Carlton Davis, Ronald Jones, Sean hey. Murphy Bunting, Antoine Winfield last year. Uh, the, I mean, second round is a really important piece as we look here. I mean, these are going to be guys that are going to play. Uh, they're going to have significant downs. Uh, Musab, man, uh, I know you were talking about offensive line. Were, were there anybody uh, that you've kind of seen out there that that maybe other team, other people have picked for the the Bucks at at sixty four? Um, I think the only guy line for offensive line uh, that I was looking at was uh, Quinn uh, M- M- Miner. Yeah, I think you got that right. Yeah. Is that, is that Quinn Miners, on? yeah, for sure. He's uh, yeah, yeah, he's up there. Yeah, Quinn Miners. Uh, I think the only the only thing I would really have to say about him is, um, you know, he he has a really high ceiling, um, and he he's he performed real well uh, at the college. But the thing is, uh, he was he came from a D three school, uh, and the only kind of action that he really kind of got against other guys from, uh, you know, other divisions was during the Senior Bowl. Um, so, I mean, he, he did pretty well there. Uh, I think, I think he could be kind of like a little like sleeper pick. I think the way, I, the way I saw his tape, I think he has a high ceiling. It just kind of comes down to, um, you know, how he, how is he going to face, you know, a whole different bunch of dudes, AKA just a whole bunch of just grown men yeah. who've been in the league already for, you know, how, however many years they've been. Uh, and that's that's kind of just my only little worry. 
uh, is how is he kind of going to adjust to a whole different kind of setting. You know, because it's, it's one thing to be, you know, playing, you know, you know D1 ball at Bama or Georgia and you're going against, you know, also the best of the best kind of defensive linemen. But uh, at the D3 level, I'm, I'm sure the guys are great, but it's a little different. Uh, and, I mean, he did have some experience, and his pro day was, you know, his, his pro day uh, profile was real good as well. Yeah. Uh, but it just, yeah, I think my only concern is this, you know, how is this guy kind of going to adjust to the, you know, to the NFL world? But the thing is, you know, if we do get him uh, later on, uh, if, if, if he is free, I, I wouldn't put him as a first round, maybe maybe second round. But uh, ideally, I would say if, if he is going to be free, maybe uh, like late second or third round or something like that. But uh, yeah, just uh, he's, hopefully, if anything, he, he might be a solid backup for our guys uh, if he does, you know, get chosen. Uh, but that's really that's really about it. Yeah, Minert's definitely a big showing at the at the Senior Bowl. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, I think Minerts is one of these guys that's, uh, uh, when, when COVID kind of shut down division two and division three football, you know, you got a lot of these guys, these small school guys that, uh, uh, they, they could have transferred up to, to a program or, or, but, but in, in this case, Quinn just decided to kind of take his talents, work on himself for a year and, uh, and show up at the pro day, show up at the at the uh, the senior bowl, and and uh, you know he he's a guy that probably will uh, drop down into that second third round just because of you know being from a small school, not playing for a year, uh, and this is maybe one of those diamonds in the rough that that they can pick up, uh, like you said, may, maybe I mean if they could find him in the third round, that'd be great, but being the la- being one of the final picks of the second round. Uh, they they would definitely maybe maybe reach a little bit for for his upside. Uh, Mikey, uh, is there anybody you're looking at that you kind of think in the second or third round that the Bucks uh, are are looking to pick from what you've seen out there in other people's mock drafts? Man, with all those names that you rattled off that we've picked in the in the second round, yeah. Levante and everybody else, man, I, I want to be opposed to. Uh, trading into the second round, get rid of that 30, 30 second uh, right, pick right. and go get two picks in the second round. If we got that type of success rate, yeah. give me all the second rounds we can get. Um, you know, it, for me, man, it, it's tough because it, there's just so many names out there, right? Like I could give you Joe and Bob and all these guys <laughs> and all of them have talent, you know, division three all the way up, you know, it's all about development and, 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 uh, it's all about you know our drafting our our you know recruiters and and doing the homework and you know it's, it's tough to give you you know all these names it's it's one of those things where I trust the system man Jason Light is on fire right now so um, I trust that he's gonna find the right offense alignment whether it's in the second or the third round and you know I, I think we're gonna rock it um, you know I, I'm my vote is get out of the first round get two or three second round picks and uh, let's keep that streak of second round picks going. Yeah. Uh, a couple guys uh, I guess I'll throw on, on the list here. Um, they, they've kind of been, I, I don't know, this is this is why I look at these other guys' mock drafts, and I'm like, I, I don't know, man. So uh, one name that was thrown around in the second round was a guy named Chris Rumpf uh, uh, the second, and he's coming out of Duke. Uh, uh, some people have him listed as a fifth-round, sixth-round uh, talent, but Sporting News has us picking him in the second round, and I don't know if they're just... Uh, overplaying our need for for kind of uh, uh, depth at the at the line, or uh, and you just you know maybe they're trying to they're when you're thinking about who the guys are picking, you think oh well, you know they need a lineman, so let's just pick the next one available. But uh, Chris Rump the uh, second, you know not not to not to uh, not to belittle him. I mean he was a uh, he's he's a big guy. He's six three, two thirty five. He's he's pretty quick uh, at the position. Runs a four point six five forty. Uh, you know, but uh, he's he, he's kind of a guy that needs to develop a little bit more strength. And uh, he, he's kind of like he's not fast enough to be on the outside, but he's not big enough to be on the inside. And it's one of those like, well, do you have a position? And and um. But on a team like the Bucks, you know, maybe he does fit in because it, we're looking for depth. So maybe he plays a little bit of everything or, you know, with that little bit of speed, is he good on a, on a special teams unit for the first year or two of his career? So uh, a lot of questions, a lot of questions about that. So uh, I, I, f- I figured it would be good to, to run around and do that with kind of looking at what 
other people thought the Bucks were going to get because next week in our draft preview, uh, we're going to take a look at who we think are going to be the home runs. Uh, we'll, we'll have a week to, to dive into the tape and give you guys, our listeners, the the kind of the the wish list the in 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 all the rounds kind of who we're looking for as we dig deep and we kind of assemble who some of these uh, uh, little lottery tickets might be for the Bucks and and hopefully there is a Chris Godwin out there in the third round you know maybe there is uh, uh, some diamonds in the rough the Quan Alexanders like we have found in the past that that were pretty good even though they weren't highly uh, touted out of college so uh, I, I guess I'll I'll, I'll throw it around. Um, uh, Musa, man, any final thoughts for us? Uh, final thoughts is uh, just, you know, thanks to our listeners for always giving us a chance. And, uh, you know, I look forward to this draft. I think it's going to be real fun. Uh, I'm really interested interested to see who we get. Um, but as, as Mikey said, I, tr- I, trust, I trust our GM, I trust our whole staff uh, to make the right picks. Yeah, Mikey, man, uh, what do you got for us before we get out of here, bud? Hey, and Jason Light, we trust, man. He put a <laughs> he put a hell of a team together. We are Super Bowl champs. We got depth. We got the whole squad back from last year. I mean, we're going to rock it, man. Whoever we add on, I'm sure they're going to be eager and ready to contribute in whatever way they can. And, uh, hey, let's go for that repeat. All right, guys. Well, uh, you know, you, the listener, you are our always and forever first round draft pick. And, and if the one thing you can do for us is if you're on social media, uh, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, hit us up at RBLR Sports. Uh, you know, go ahead and follow us. Keep keep in the loop. We, we send out score updates uh, every time there's a podcast that's updated, uh, as well as more content in the future. The other thing we can do is if you're on the, wherever you're listening to our voice, if you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you are listening to our voices, hit that little subscribe button. Hit that little bell that gives you notifications on YouTube. Be the first and foremost when these are uploaded that you get them ready to go in your feed, in your inbox, however you get this content. Um, It it takes a second for you to click, but it means a whole lot to us as we grow. So uh, I cannot wait to hear what Musab and Mikey have for us next week as we take a look at our RBLR NFL Draft Preview. Uh, The draft is is right around the corner, guys, and uh, we will be here every step of the way for you. So uh, for Musab, for Mikey, my name is Eureka, and we will see you next week. Go Bucks! Go Bucks! Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, Please remember to like and subscribe.